Testing. Testing. Testing.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for joining us today. The hour of four o'clock having arrived, it is time for me to announce that uh, we are reconvening after having been in closed session. So we will now resume the public portion of our meeting. And let me ask that you all please stand, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Supervisor Mike Wasserman today. Thank you all very much for being with us today. The uh, first item of business on our agenda today uh, as we reconvene in our open and public session is for um, Supervisor Chavez to uh, offer an adjourn in memoriam. Supervisor Chavez, we turn to you. Thank you, President Samidian. Um, today, I'm honored that we're adjourning our meeting in memory of Ed Hoffman. Um, I'm gonna read Ed's obituary, and I'm just so honored that Dolly Sandoval, that you're here, and I'm gonna have you stand at the end, not at the beginning, and, the, and I'll have everybody who's here supporting you stand as well. Um, so, Ed Hoffman, loving husband, doting uncle, loyal friend, whitewater rafter, political activist, campaign strategist, social justice warrior, vice president of, so of software sales, lifelong environmentalist, world traveler, and avid golfer. Ed Hoffman brought an abundance of gifts and talents into the world, whether developing strategies for search engine software or political campaigns, and brought a combination of keen intellect, compassion, and a heart to all he did. He was a master at reading polls, writing winning political materials, and capturing voter, da voter data. His previous employment at various search and e-commerce companies prepared him for his position at SLI based in New Zealand, where he spent many hours on the road speaking and developing a global sales team around him. But more than anything, Ed loved Dolly. He loved partnering with her on her numerous campaigns for public office, whitewater rafting, hiking, traveling, any number of things. In September of 2015, while on sabbatical, Ed was diagnosed with ALS. Together, he and Dolly made the decision for Dolly to take a leave of absence from teaching. They continued to live a rich and vibrant life together in Cupertino, as well as traveling around the world. In the two and a half years between Ed's diagnosis and eventual passing, they traveled to Argentina, Portugal, Costa Rica, Germany, Austria, Austria, the Czech Republic, Ireland, Iceland, Puerto Vallarta, and crisscrossed the United States. They enjoyed tam time with family and friends and created lasting memories. Ed also participated in ALS research studies, and he cherished his Wednesday afternoon playtime with his great nephew Daniel and dinners with niece Ka Catherine. He continued to engage deeply in politics and social justice issues. He knew that surviving ALS was not an option but he never once nodded in death's direction. Ed passed quietly and peacefully in the arms of his beloved wife, Dolly, and with close friends by his side. Ed and Dolly faced each challenge in their lives together with grace and vitality and humor and a deep and meaningful commitment to each other, family, and friends. And Ed is dearly missed. Ed was preceded in death by his father, Donald Eugene Hoffman, he is survived by Dolly, his siblings Kevin and, Ter and Terrell, and mother Marion Faith, as well as nieces Kristen, Cynthia, and Andrea, Stormy, Catherine, and great nephew Daniel, and the entire Sandoval family. Um, I just wanted to uh, say something, Dolly. I think all of us know you and um, knew Ed. And as I was thinking about today, I was thinking about why it's so important that we do these in memoriams. And it really is to mark the passing of people who have had incredible impacts on our lives, really even outside of their families and friends. And Ed was certainly one of those people. And I wanted to um, share a story about Ed. There are many I could share, and I promise this one is completely PG. For people who know Ed, you'll know that's important. Um, you know, Ed, 
Ed was um, such a profound leader in the environmental movement in our region. And even as he was um, getting sicker and sicker and he lost his ability to speak because ALS is just such an aggressive, horrible disease, um, he used a whiteboard to express all kinds of things. And we were watching the news together and he was angry over the way um, immigrants were being treated. And he, and he said, is this a runaround against DACA? And you know, before I could respond, he was writing again about some other offense that he was watching on TV. And my point in that is that he remained um, a sharp mind till the very last moments. And I am certain, Dolly, deeply and madly in love with you. So th thank you for letting us share this in memoriam with you. And if you could just stand and all the folks who came to support Dolly to say um, and acknowledge Ed's incredible life and his contribution to our community. And I'm so grateful that you came. Thank you all for being here with us. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Chavez, for that very lovely and loving in memoriam. And to Dolly Sandoval and her friends and family, we convey our sympathies from us all and are honored to be able to adjourn in memory today. Thank you. Colleagues, that takes us to our next item on the agenda, and that is item number eight, which is to consider recommendations relating to certificates of appreciation, commendation, and proclamation. We have a number of items here. Uh, and um, since a number of the folks are present to receive these um, appreciations and commendations and proclamations, I'm, I'm hoping that they all pass. Um, so um, item, item number eight is before us. If we could ask the clerk to please display the voting panel on our screens. Thank you. If we could get a motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Chavez. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Cortese, for the second. We'll ask all members of the board to please vote on item number eight. All members having voted, we will ask that the clerk please display the results of the screen overhead. And the motion carries four to zero with one member, Supervisor Yeager, away today. So that passes four to zero. That then takes us to item number nine, which is to actually present commendations and proclamations, mm -hmm. the very first one of which uh, I'm going to turn to Supervisor Wasserman uh, to assist with, uh, and that is a commendation for John L. Gibbs as he retires after 30 years of service to the County of Santa Clara. Supervisor Wasserman. Thank you, and I would like to invite my Chief of Staff, John Gibbs, to join me at the podium. John Gibbs began his career with the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors in 1988 after receiving his law degree from Willamette University College of, of Law. Whereas John's distinguished tenure as Chief of Staff and Board Policy Aide spanned nearly 30 years, beginning with Supervisor Diane McKenna, followed by Supervisor Don Gage, and concluding with Supervisor Mike Wasserman. Whereas John worked regularly with leaders in government, business, and the community to help craft public policy in a wide range of areas for adoption by the Board of Supervisors. John attended more than 600 Board of Supervisor meetings. Lucky you. <laughs> Hired and managed more than 25 staff members and amazingly, did not take a single day of sick day in his 30 years at the county. Whereas John's work was hallmarked by his consistently well-reasoned and intellectual approach to management and governance, as well as his calm demeanor and unique ability to see each issue from numerous perspectives. Whereas John generously lent his time and talent to the community, including serving as president 
of the San Jose State University Alumni Association, for which he was named 2008 California State University Alumni Advocate of the Year and board member of the Tower Foundation and board member of the California State University Alumni Council. Whereas John served as a board member for Silicon Valley Children's Foundation, chair of the County Parks and Recreation Commission, president of the Willow Glen Neighborhood Association, and president of St. Elizabeth's Day Home Board of Directors. Whereas John is a graduate of Stanford's Leadership and Transformation Program and worked on numerous campaigns for transportation, library, and park measures, and whereas in addition to his Juris Doctor degree, John holds a Master's of Public Administration degree and a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science from San Jose State University. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of the County of Santa Clara does hereby honor and commend you for 30 years of service to the people of Santa Clara County. And I'm now going to ask my phenomenal chief of staff and my best friend to say a few words. So I picked Monday because I thought there would be less people here. <laughs> uh, but this is nice because I, and many of you are here for me, but let's face it, most of you are not. Uh, never heard of me and won't care about me tomorrow. Um, but some, some numbers in the resolution, 600 Board of Supervisors meeting, and I think that's an estimate on the low side and doesn't count commissions or special budget hearings. The vast majority of those meetings um, happened without a smartphone. In fact, a lot of them happened without even cell phones being around. I say that because now you sit through a board meeting and you can be on your cell phone and you can answer emails and you can have a productive time. <laughs> uh, uh, and and kind of listen to what's what's going on. Uh, so those were a hard 600 meetings, I will tell you. Um, and there aren't too many faces who were here when I started on the 10th floor, Hortensia, in the clerk's office, I think, is one of the few. Um, when I started at the county, came in, dropped off my resume for a job for Diane McKenna, knew, I knew absolutely nothing about the county. Maybe they did the buses, they did the county fair, which was a big deal because my family thought once I got this job, we were going to get a cart to drive around. Golf cart, that was status at the county fair. Uh, never got a cart. Um, and I remember when I started, they told me, the county is an invisible layer of government. And I heard it, and I didn't process it, and I didn't care. I just wanted the job. And then I realized what they meant. The people had a clear understanding of what the city does, what the state does, their school board, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But they didn't know what the county did. And the few things they did know that the county did, the county doesn't do anymore. Um, and, but then I started to realize, okay, well, I'm, I'm a county person. And I'm here 30 years. And I, I never worked for, really, another entity than the county. And every single friend of mine, every time my family gets together, they ask me the same question. How are things at the city? <laughs> and, you know, after the first three or 4,000 times, you try to say, well, no, it's really the county. Oh, yeah, yeah, county. I mean, even my family, you know, they would say that. So after a while, I just started to say, they'd say, how are things at the city? Presumably, they meant the city of San Jose. And I would say, it's really terrible there. You know? <laughs> And, and just, just say as many bad things as I could say about the city. Um, but I, in hearing that the county is an invisible layer of government is, is the biggest lie ever. Uh, it, it may not be on everybody's radar, but when you need the county, they're not invisible. And all of these folks, and most of the folks in this room, uh, who are today's or this month's best of the best, will tell you that the county provides life and death services and makes a huge difference in people's lives. I will close with just this one thought, and it, it's gonna sound corny, but to put it in context, 
you have to know that I met my wife at the county. Um, and, uh, and so that when I say honestly, every good thing in my life came from my employment here at Santa Clara County. Um, and with that, I will leave it. Ms. Mills, uh, what we're going to do is ask that you take a couple of photos with uh, Mr. Wasserman, uh, and then uh, the rest of us would like to bask in your reflected glory, and we're going to invite ourselves into your photo opportunity, all right? So thank you. I take a great picture, so it should be good. He's having trouble with Mike. Okay, so. Please say thank you one more time for 30 years. Thank you, and I think that brings us to item number 9B, and we go to our county executive to help with this particular thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Maybe my own two cents about uh, John Gibbs before he leaves. <laughs> Just think about Diane McKenna, Don Gage, Mike Wasserman. What do they all have in common for your, for our perspective? John Gibbs. John Gibbs, and they're all really caring, very nice, very thoughtful, very organized people who have done great things for this county. One begins to wonder whether John trained them well or not. <laughs> Good job, John. Okay, Irma Puentes, will you join me up here at the, cor at the uh, table? There she is. says, I thought it was going to fade into the night. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> well, Irma's career in the county began in August of 2005 in the Public Affairs Unit of the Office of the County Executive. It was in 2007 that she accepted the position in a, a position in the Office of Emergency Services. Her official title was Executive Assistant to the Director of Emergency Services. However, all of us know that she actually runs the office. Sorry, Dana. She probably wouldn't have it any other way. Irma has always had a work ethic that cannot be beat. She's the first person to offer a helping hand, to stay late, to come in at the crack of dawn, and she's been known to cut her vacation short despite many protests, on a, or come in on a day off just to make sure an office project is completed or an event runs smoothly. Irma's commitment to OES, its mission, and its employees is evidenced by how hard she works and her very high degree of dependability. She's self-motivated, pays attention to the minutest of details, and always watches out for the office. She always thinks three steps ahead, anticipating the needs of our team 
in making sure everyone has what they need. And that's critical for the OES because they always need to think three steps ahead. She's a consummate professional and possesses superior customer service skills. She has been the ultimate team player. Irma is the heart of the office, the fabric that holds everything and everyone together. She always has a smile for everyone. She is the kind of person who gives you her lunch if you've forgotten yours. She will go out of her way to help anyone. She never misses anyone's birthday, and she's the reason our office is a family and not just a workplace. We will really feel the loss without her and are beyond grateful for everything she has done for the office on a daily basis. On a personal note, Irma has been married for 34 years to her husband, Richard. All right. <laughs> Together they have two adult sons, Alexander and Matthew, and one adorable dachshund named Tucker. Loki is the ferret in the family. Really? <laughs> Irma's greatest joy in her life is her family. She looks forward to having more time to spend with them in her retirement and to complete a number of home projects that haven't gotten done while she's been working. While Irma has traveled the world, her goal in retirement is not to travel. Rather, her goal is to take brief trips, weekend adventures, spend some time in Reno and the Grand Canyon, visit small towns in California and Nevada, and especially spend time with her family. <clears throat> the Office of Emergency Services and the Office of the County Execu Executive will surely miss Irma. We wish her the very best and the happiest and longest retirement with plenty of relaxation and adventures along the way. Congratulations, Irma. Thank you. You don't want to say anything? Thank you, everyone, for coming. I wasn't supposed to be up here. It's supposed to be a quiet exit. So I really enjoyed working for OES. It's been really hard to make this decision. It hasn't even sunk in. It's just a few days away. But um, I'm really grateful to have had the opportunity to work with all of you as my second family, really. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, Next up, we're going to ask our County Council, Mr. Williams, if you will uh, do the honors for item 9C, uh, which is uh, recognition for Deborah Cobble for her years of service to the County of Santa Clara. Mr. Williams? Maybe you can, can join us up here. So it's my honor and privilege on behalf of the Board of Supervisors in the county to present this commendation to Debbie Cobble. I've actually known Debbie for far fewer years uh, than many people at the county. Uh, she, of course, served here as an assistant county counsel and had a long and distinguished career uh, as general counsel for the water district and working for the city and, and many other roles as a public employee. Uh, but then after retiring, as we are so blessed as a county to have many retirees who come back and on a volunteer basis continue to serve for us, Debbie came back and has worked with the county in a number of roles, including the Planning Commission. But the role where I got to know Debbie was really through the redevelopment dissolution process. And for those of you who don't know anything about that process, let's just say it's not the most um, easy volunteer work that someone could maybe sign up for in their retirement. Uh, it's a it's a very it's been a very unfortunately contentious process over the years uh, but Debbie has dedicated countless hours and has served as uh, this board's appointee on the San Jose and Santa Clara and Sunnyvale and Morgan Hill redevelopment dissolution oversight boards and through that process I've gotten to know her as someone who really is uh, a, a very
very sharp and wise person, a very articulate uh, defender and passionate defender for public service and for the taxing entity's interests. And she served in what was really a fiduciary role that uh, where she had to deal with chambers packed full of people who were upset at some policy outcomes but didn't really necessarily have an understanding of the whole context of what was happening and the legal issues around it. And she did so with grace and did so with, always with a focus on uh, what uh, the mission was and what her role was as a fiduciary. And so I know that the county is incredibly grateful for the service that you've provided, very sad that you'll be uh, moving out of the area. Uh, but we wanted to thank you uh, for all the work that you've done and how much it's benefited uh, all of the taxing entities, the school districts, the county, and others, and all the other roles that you've had uh, here to help the county. So thank you, Debbie. Thank you very much. I don't want to detract from anything nice that was said. Um, I do want to say that I am sincerely grateful for the many varied opportunities over the years I've had to do public service uh, on behalf and with the county. I've worked with the most amazing people, uh, staff, volunteers, board of supervisors. It's, it's, I'm just one of the luckiest people in the world. And this was a really nice icing on the cake. So thanks. Thank you. Ms. Cobble, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Please say thank you one more time. And Dr. Smith, at this point, we want to ask you to help us with the Employee Excellence Awards uh, sooner rather than later so that they don't become retirees as the uh, meeting. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do the Employee Excellence Awards, which is already always an excellent time for me and for the board. We get a glimpse into the fabulous employees that we have, all 20,000, represented today by only 10 that we'll highlight. So I'd like all of the award winners to join me up here on my right and left in the chairs, and will the rest of us clap? Okay. Up. Grab a seat. So I'm going to read a little bit about each of our uh, award winners. When I call your name, you're going to come up here and stand next to me. We'll do our best to embarrass you. Um, these are written by your supervisors to tell a little bit about how fabulous you are and how much they value you. And then once I'm done with you, we'll turn you over to President uh, Simidian, who will give you your award, and uh, then come back to your chair, and we'll uh, finish the group and then get some pictures taken, OK? And you out there, welcome to yell and scream, jump up and down. <laughs> Just don't throw anything, or if you do, hit them. Okay, Andres Gonzalez. <laughs> Andres has recently promoted to sergeant and has proven himself as an employee who's committed to safe, secure, and reformed of the uh, Custody Bureau of the Sheriff's Office. Congratulations on your new promotion. In the classification unit, Sheriff Gonzalez, or Deputy Gonzalez, Sergeant Gonzalez, <laughs> helps to create, facilitate, and teach the new behavior-based Sheriff's Office classification system. He serves as a lead academy course instructor, is this unit's subject matter expert for existing staff and is one of the designated instructors for the new Custody Bureau Use of Force Policy. Sergeant Gonzalez also testifies in court as an expert witness for the office. 
His positive impact extends beyond the Custody Bureau. He has volunteered to help with anti-bullying presentations for children at local schools and represents the Sheriff's Office at local community events. When the Sergeant isn't training fellow staff members, he can be found coaching competitive soccer and baseball teams. He has been a coach in the community for the last 12 years, and he brings honor and respect to our organization. Congratulations, Sergeant. Thank you. Thank you. Shell Azevedo. Wow. Well, it looks like the clerk of the board has a cheering. <laughs> so, Michelle is a confidential office specialist, three with the office of the clerk of the board, and has been with us for five years. She exemplifies what it means to be an extraordinary county employee. Michelle is smart, quick thinking, dependable, and caring. She began her county career as an intern through the Cal Works program and worked her way up through the ranks to be a steadfast and valued member of the clerk of the board team. Michelle's ability to listen and relate to others in a way that makes them feel comfortable is just one quality that helps her to succeed in her job. She continually strives to assist others and find new ways to contribute to the department. Michelle is always there to lend a hand when the job needs to be done. In addition to her hard work at the county, Michelle is a mom who knocks it out of the park when it comes to her son, Valentino. She takes great pride in raising her son and still manages to maintain a work-life balance. Really? <laughs> It uh, doesn't sound like you have much free time. But in her free time, she enjoys spending time with the family, listening to a variety of music, specifically R&B, and hiking the beautiful Bay Area trails. Congratulations, Michelle. Great job. I have to work really hard with this. Shannon Cagle. Shannon is an administrative service manager with uh, facilities and fleet human resources, has been with us for seven years. Shannon is always there to help her coworkers and perform a wide variety of human resource duties. She has established excellent working relationships with everybody in facility and fleet, including the directors, managers, staff, and also with the other county departments. Shannon took it upon herself to take and pass the Society for Human Re Resources Management Certification training and became a subject matter specialist in human resources. Knowledgeable in her work and detail-oriented, Shannon always takes on new assignments with enthusiasm and adds a creative twist to many of her assigned tasks. She's pleasant, even-keeled, and easy to talk to. These attributes put facility and fleet employees at ease when working with her on any task, project, or issue. Outside of work, Shannon is a proud mom who likes to spend time in the softball field watching her daughter. All right. <laughs> What's she play? What position? Pitcher. Pitcher. Ooh. She always likes to travel, attend music and sporting events, and spends quality time with her family and friends. Congratulations, Shannon. Thank you. Good job. Hello, Shari. Hello, Wai. Hello, Wai. Hello, Wai. Couldn't just be Smith, huh? No. <laughs> okay. Um, Lou Cherie. Lou Cherie. And Lou Cherie. Lou Cherie is a deputy district attorney with the Office of the District Attorney Gang Unit 
and he's been with us for three years. He has been assigned to the gang unit, and during that time, he has successfully handled some of the most complicated and violent gang-related crimes in the unit. As a resident of, the, of Santa Clara County, Alusharere is committed to serve and protect our community. His dedication to public safety is exemplary. He's an extremely hard worker, and he's a great, intelligent prosecutor who takes on tough cases without reservations. His hard work and tenacity has served our community well. He has received great results and achieved justice in highly challenging gang cases. These are the difficult ones, aren't they? Sometimes. You keep our alternate defense unit busy. <laughs> Free try. <laughs> He's a great team member who possesses a contagiously positive approach to his tasks. He's pro his prosecutorial experience and dedication to justice are assets that are key to the DA's office and represent the best that the county can bring to bear. Congratulations. Thank you for your years of service. Jesus Sanchez. <laughs> Jesus, who goes by Jesse, is a so in um, social service is in the social services agency, central services purchasing warehouse and supply operations, and he's been with us for 33 years. Time flies when you're having fun. 33 years is a long career. It's been easy money. You're not going to retire, are you? No. Good. <laughs> we'll have them for another 30, right? Not quite. <laughs> At least not five. <laughs> Jesse is directly responsible for maintaining stock inventory, making deliveries, scheduling pickups and drop-offs, drop and the SSA asset tagging process. That must be why we never have unfound assets in SSA, huh? Very much. Good. Jesse seems to be a walking encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to the warehouse and supply operations. In the past quarter, we have experienced a number of special projects that affect a vast majority of the employees. And before time-sensitive deadlines could be assigned, Jesse had created a workflow that would result in the completion of all this work by the deployment dates. Throughout these special and time-consuming projects, Jesse has consistently met established project deadlines and milestones. He is thought of as our unit's cheerleader as well as mascot. He's the go-to man. If given the right resources, there isn't a job too big or too small for Jesse. His ability to get the job done and create a harmonious working environment is truly contagious. Jesse's career as a public service servant began in 1985 in the Department of Agriculture. When the program was discontinued, Jesse moved to the Retention Center, where we, he was an exemplary employee for 20 years before settling into his new and current role as stock clerk. Jesse and his wife of 33 years, you do everything in 33 years? Very much. <laughs> Job, work. Judy. His wife's name, Judy, and their daughter, Caroline, enjoy family time by taking trips over the hill to Aptos near the beach. Congratulations, Jesse. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Renee Piazza. Renee is a supervising child support officer and training coordinator with the Department of Child Support Services in the training division, also with us for 33 years. Are you copying him? <laughs> good, good example to copy. Everybody's here for 33 years. That says a lot about the county, mm -hmm. doesn't it? I love my job. Love your job. I love that. Throughout her county career, Renee has remained committed to providing excellent quality service to our diverse base of internal and external customers. 
Renee supervises our office-wide training unit, always taking the initiative to ensure that child support professionals receive the tools and training they need in their jobs. Renee has received the Santa Clara County Safety Award three times over the course of her career. She's a certified trainer by the State of California Department of Child Support Services and a mentor to other trainers in the office. Congratulations. <laughs> Just a plug for Child Support Services. You, you don't know how much of a, a big deal it is to be able to help a child until you've actually done it. And Renee keeps everybody together working, helping our kids. <laughs> Renee is married, has one son, a recent aerospace engineering graduate from St. Louis University. Wow, he's going to go to space, huh? Or send someone there. Or send someone there. <laughs> Renee and her family are avid Sharks fan. Fans. She recently won an official Teal House of Sharks territory paint job. She and her husband were photographed for the Mercury News in front of their newly painted Sharks home where she received her own jersey with the name Piazza on the back presented by Sharks President John Tor Tortora. Congratulations, I remember that picture. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Gary Davis. <laughs> I didn't know I had a good fan base here. Public Health has a fan base too. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, that's great. So, Gary is Information Service Manager 1 with the Public Health Department and has been here for 21 years. Over the last year, Gary has assisted public health preparedness in upgrading and reconfiguring the Medical Health Joint Operations Center. This center establishes a framework under which the Public Health Department fulfills it, its emergency response duties during a disaster or a public health emergency. Gary created a redesign plan that incorporates technology that needs to ensure a continuity of operations during an emergency or disaster. His leadership on the project has been instrumental and his expertise was essential as the room was built out and the utilization of the facility technology began. So if there's a public health disaster, he's why we get a good <laughs> response. Gary demonstrates exceptional professionalism and continually sets a high standard in all respects of his work. He looks for opportunities to grow and shows a tremendous willingness to learn new areas of public health preparedness. Gary is, an act, is active on the advisory board of the Santa Clara Valley Emergency Preparedness Coalition and facilitates working relationships to remote, promote emergency planning across all sectors of the healthcare community. Gary's consistent hard work, support, and dedication are greatly appreciated and he is truly an asset to the county as he makes a huge difference in making the county run. Congratulations, Gary. Benaya Sebastian. Benaya is a registered nurse with the, and is in the quality She's a quality coordinator in meaningful use. She's at BMC Quality and Safety Department, has been with us for three years. <clears throat> meaningful use is the Medi Medicare Electronic Health Record Incentive Program. It improves quality, safety, efficiency, and reduces health disparities with better clinical outcomes. Nurse Sebastian took the lead for the clinical alarm management project for patient, national patient safety goals to improve the safety of the clinical alarm systems. She went well beyond the requirements in the quantity and quality of the project, demonstrating perseverance and initiative. 
The project resulted in the publication of an abstract titled Alarm Management, a Systems Approach to Patient Safety, co-written by Vinaya and Carolyn Brown. All right, good job. Vinaya keeps leadership aware of the successes, needs, and barriers in a respectful manner. She treats others and their opinions with respect and acknowledges the value of their views. Vinaya excels in development in developing innovative and creative solutions and adapts to changing demands and circumstances while maintaining a calm optimism. When away from the office, she loves to hike, run, and travel with her husband and three children. She's completing her master's in computer science and will be graduating in December. Congratulations and thank you very much. Joanna Kincaid. Sneaking up behind me, huh? <laughs> Joanna is a senior office specialist with Consumer Environmental Protection Agency in the administration division. She's been with us for five years. Joanna has demonstrated exemplary public service through her commitment to provide exceptional customer service to the residents and businesses of the county. As our first operational aid, Joanna support, supported several SEPA programs where she gained experience as an animal control officer and performing outreach for the Vector Control District, clean water, and hazardous waste materials. Does anybody do any other work around there? <laughs> You're the only one who does that, huh? Joanna believes that every day at SEPA is a learning experience. Beyond her commitment to work, She's also our employee wellness coordinator and has chaired several successful combined giving campaigns. Having been in the foster care system herself, Joanna has inspired staff with her passion for helping others. Her dedication, hard work, enthusiasm make her a role model for her coworkers and for the community that she serves. Joanna loves to spend time outdoors on walks and hikes with her beloved dog, Munch. She's also an avid abstract painter and loves to collect rare rock, rocks and fossils. She's always striving to learn more about insects, science, and the outside world. Thank you very much, Joanna, for everything you do. <laughs> David Boyd. and airports. <laughs> David's an associate civil engineer with Roads and Airports Department Land Development. He's been with us for 10 years. David brings a high level of energy and instinctive ability to perform professional connection or to form personal connections that break the stereotype associated with the engineering profession. You're not always drawing, huh? No. <laughs> okay, good. He provides a quick response with a heavy dose of humor. With these traits, David has established an extensive network of connections in the community. He's responsible for coordinating construction projects by both private developers and major utility companies that impact the county expressways. Recently, on a million, multi-million dollar capital project, there were some utility poles that needed to be moved. David drew on his established connections with the utility company and facilitated the relocation, saving the county money and avoiding project delays. Good job. <laughs> David's proactive approach is impressive. The, part, the department has received numerous letters of commendation describing David's excellent customer service. In a recent letter, a developer states, David's knowledge of development and expertise in street improvements has been a huge benefit. He's truly a team player. David's knowledge, expertise, and dedication have proven to be an invaluable asset to the county, and he fulfills the mission of the county by providing service to our community. Thank you very much, David.
So as always, every month, it's inspiring to hear these stories about some of our employees. I hope you agree there's 20,000 other stories that are similar. It's not quite as good this month. But um, a big round of applause for these great employees. So now we're going to turn our backs to you and take some pictures, but you're welcome to continue to clap and scream and whatever. So we'll. Thank you all very much. We are now officially adjourned until 9.30 a.m. tomorrow morning in these same chambers. We stand adjourned. <laughs>